Hi everybody, this is Della from The Beauty of Clay and I am planning one of our blocks for next year, fifth grade for my daughter. Um, and it is the geometry block. And we are doing using Waldorf geometry. I found Waldorf geometry in my son's sixth year of school and fell in love with it. I love how they do geometry. In geometry, Waldorf forms out of the form drawings, form drawings in around fifth grade, and then they move into geometry. In fifth grade in the United States, it varies from country to country. Um, geometry is freehand geometry. Now, they often will introduce geometry in different ways in the books that I have read, and I'll leave link links to those resources below. They have gone from a circle into a triangle, but I'm going to do it a little bit different. We started quality of numbers in kindergarten with her, and from my quality of numbers curriculum that you can find on my website, I'll leave a link in the show notes. They start out with the introduction, introduction of the circle, and then all the other lines and forms form from that circle. And so we begin by introducing the circle, and then you place two dots on the circle, and the connection of those two dots forms the circle. The connection of three dots on a circle forms the triangle, four dots, the square, five dots, the pentagon, and so forth. The wonderful thing about these Waldorf circles in the first years of education is that you can visually see a number's factors by the shapes that form within that circle. So we are moving in the same direction with geometry. We're going to start with a circle, and then we're going to move through the same forms, how a line forms, how um, triangle forms, and so forth from the circle by the number of dots on the circle. So a couple different things that I'm planning on doing with the circle. Another thing, if you have been with Waldorf form drawing, then you know there's a lot that goes on before the form actually makes it onto the page. The idea is for the child to experience the form in full form. Excuse the pun. So you may walk the form, build the form with rope or Play-Doh. You may draw the form in the air. You may feel someone drawing the form on your back. Different ways to experience the form before it gets written down on paper. And that is what I want to bring through in our geometry unit. So even though these all these beautiful illustrations that will eventually make it into her notebook. There is so much more that will go on behind the scene. Some ideas that I'm having are from some of the resources that are in the show notes, such as walking the circle, noticing how walking the circle is different from walking a line, what happens if we straighten out certain areas of the circle, we form ellipses, what happens when we carry a stick with us, and that forms the tangents of the circles that we see here. We'll also be using my nesting shapes, if you've seen those before. I think I have a website, maybe an IGTV. I'll try to link those in the show notes as well. We will be experiencing the shapes through light on form so that it gives us shadow, um, which I have illustrated here. The other thing that we want to do that I want to, her to see a circle in motion, which is really interesting to me because in this Waldorf way of ex exploration, there is so much art and seeing involved than just geometry for academics sake. So we will see a circle moved, um, turned in a circle so that we can see the various shapes and how foreshortening works and that we don't always see a circle as a circle. Sometimes it's an ellipse. We will of course do the anatomy of the circle 
and we will do the exercise where we find the circumference of a circle and the ratio of pi. We will do this by measuring various circles, measuring their diameter and their circumference, and then looking for the ratio. In addition to that, we will look at the area of the circle, and there's a very cool proof, if you will, of coming up with a formula for area of a circle that involves taking the circle and cutting it up into little triangles and making a rectangle out of it. And in doing this, you can see that one side is the radius and then the other side is half of the circumference. <clears throat> and eventually, we will get around to illustrating each of these concepts in our notebook um, freehand without the aid of a compass or of um, measurement. Moving on to the line, which is not usually done in Waldorf geometry that I have seen, but going back to where I said I wanted to bring forth what we did in her early years and bring each of the forms out of the circle, we can do that by finding dots or intersecting circles and you, where you have two points, you can make a line. And this will also bring continuity to high school geometry where we talk about Euclid's proofs and how they came about deciding what a line segment was. We will use the same sensory that we did before with the circle. So she will walk a line. We will talk about how that differs from a circle. She will view a line as it turns in um, full circle and notice how it foreshortens and then it becomes a dot and then it lengthens out again. Of course, there's not much that we can do with light and shadow with the line since it's pretty much two-dimensional. But I didn't want to leave it out. And then we'll need to go over the definitions of angles for our work into a triangle. The triangle is probably the most interesting, I think, in fifth grade geometry. There's just so much here. So we will, of course, go over the anatomy, which I have here, of a triangle and the various types of triangles. We will also put three dots on a circle. In our early years, we tried to make those as uniform as possible, but here we want to explore the different kinds of triangles that can be formed. And so there will be some experimentation there with the dots in different areas. We will also walk the triangle and compare that to the line and to the circle. And we will look at the triangle in motion if we, we're flipping it, which both these and these illustrate. If you're looking here and you're turning the triangle, when it's upright, it may look like this. And as you turn it, the sides will shorten. When it's completely vertical, you won't be able to see the triangle at all, merely a line. And then when we move the apex, which is the top of the triangle, down, continuing in a full circle, then it moves in through the same processes, but in the opposite direction. And here is another visual representation of this. And it is also what happens when the apex of the triangle moves towards the base and then again away from the base. So we will also play with nesting triangles in the same way that we did the circles and look at shadows of pyramids and triangles and what happens to their angles depending on the source of light and where it is. We will look at a couple of proofs, including Thales' proof, that a triangle inscribed 
in a semicircle is always going to have a right angle and then also that the internal angles of a triangle add to 180. These are pretty fun, cool little proofs that are easy to do with this age group. And in addition to playing with the apex, moving it closer and farther away from the base, we will also move the apex from side to side and explore um, that. I also plan to experiment a little bit with fractions in the triangle section and the ratios of the different areas of nesting fractions. This can be done with, or nesting triangles, excuse me, this can be done with our physical nesting triangles and it can also be done with this. Some of the arrangements that you can make with nesting triangles have a distinct ratio and we will explore those. Then I plan on moving into quadrilaterals in the same way that we explored the other shapes. We will start with the circle and our circle will have four dots on it. In the early years, again, we made those four dots equally spaced around the circle, which gave us a square. But if they aren't equally spaced, that it gives us a completely, well, it gives us a different kind of quadrilateral. It can give us a rectangle, a parallelogram, rhombus, trapezoid, or just a quadrilateral that has, that's not particularly special. So we'll go over the special quadrilaterals. We'll also look at a square in light and shadow and its shapes. We'll play with the nesting shapes again. And we'll explore symmetry, which I plan on doing for both the circle and the triangles as well. Um, we will probably look at ratios and fractions for nesting squares and the ratio and fraction portion will probably end at the squares, the quadrilaterals, because once you get into pentacons, those relationships become a little more complicated. We will also look at the square in motion where it's flipped and foreshortening happens and what that looks like as it's going through motions. We will of course make our illustrations when we are finished and something new that we will do, well actually I plan on doing this with triangles too, but we will chart the different kinds of quadrilaterals and look at their similarities and difference in sides, angles, some of their interior angles and their rotational symmetry and their regular symmetry as well. So other forms that we plan on draw, drawing after experimenting would be to move, leave the base the same for the quadrilateral and move the top two vertices in different areas to see what kind of quadrilaterals that we come up with. And then also a series of rectangles inscribed inside a circle and trapezoids inscribed inside a triangle. And we may or may not do this one here, del deltoid star. Then we will move on to the pentagon. It's five dots on the circle. And as we progress here, there's it becomes a little more complicated and there's less to do. I at least want to get through the hexagon. I think I would like to continue maybe even through um, a 10 sided polygon, maybe a 12 sided polygon. I haven't decided yet. And I also want to have a feel for when we do this work and where she is, and that will determine how far we progress with the shapes. So on the pentagram, we have nesting pentagrams, and we will explore the midpoints. I had on here to explore fractions. I'm thinking a little more on that. We probably won't. We will explore area, which is what this is down here, but we will do it in a way that's derived from the other shapes. Um, the formula for an area of a pentagon sometimes requires some, the, you know, a little bit of um, 
sine, cosine, and tangent, and obviously we're not going to get into that at this age. But what we can do is recognize that we can piece our pentagon into triangles, and we can derive our triangle formula from the square, and in doing that, we can figure out what the pentagon is by just multiplying the area of this triangle times 5. And that will also give us, or also introduce us to the term apothem, which I found in my research in deriving areas for, for um, various regular pentagons. Pen, not pentagons, polygons. We will also explore the pentagon in motion. We will look at the internal angles, but like I said before, the amount that we do for the pentagon will be less, and it, it becomes even less as we move up into more complicated shapes. So the next one will be the hexagon, which maybe is one of my favorites, and this possibly will be our ending spot, or we will look at others depending on how the lesson goes. This is supposed to be the end of year lesson for next year, and so, you know, at the end of the year, we're always ready to be done with school, so we'll see how it goes. We will do the nesting concentric hexagons. We will not play with the nesting shapes because at this point, the hexagons don't hold their shape well enough to, in the paper nesting shapes in order to explore those. But we will draw the concentric hexagons and maybe um, some of the nesting. Here's the nesting where we find the midpoints of each of the hexagons. We probably will do that. And we will also explore the area of a hexagon in the same way that we do the pentagon and just realize that we can break it up into triangles, find the formula for the triangle, and then multiply that by six. The other thing I plan on doing at the hexagon is to chart the different shapes so that we can compare them, how many sides they have, how many internal angles, the sum of those internal angles, their symmetry, um, et cetera. And then possibly we will work through the other shapes by drawing and exploring a little bit on those, but that's more icing on the cake. I'm not sure that will happen. And so that is some of my plans for the fifth grade freehand geometry. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you'd like to see more, you can subscribe. You can also find me on my website, thebeautyofplay.com.